كتب لنا اذا الله كتب لنا عمر يعني وبكره انتم كبرتوا وبتحكوا لاولاد اولادكم ثق التاريخ بالفيديو كانوا يوثقوا بالمدرسه و واو الى اخره الله اكبر ونريد أن نمن على الذين استضعفوا في الأرض ونجعلهم أئمة ونجعلهم الوارثين. We want to bestow a favor. Listen to how beautiful this ayah is. We want to bestow a favor about those who people thought were weak by making them imams, inheriting one another. This is our will that we turn the life of the oppressed on the earth into a life of dignity. They are going to inherit, inherit the earth, become the inheritors of the power and authority and leadership on earth. And this is at the time of the return of the 12th Imam. Al they asked Al sixth Imam, who's this about? And they asked Imam al Rabba. He said, this is about the Mahdi. For years, they used to think we are the weak on the earth. Allah will look after the weak at the end and the oppressed by allowing the Mahdi to remove all the tyrants and establish justice on the earth. There's a relief for that. We're giving you the promise. We're giving you the, the good news that after having been oppressed, we're going to make you the Aima. We're going to make you the inheritors of the earth. So, there's, so that you don't lose hope. You don't despair from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Nu'man in his ghayba and Saduq within the Kamal says that the sixth Imam said, if you want to see the signs of the twelfth Imam's reappearance, go to Surah 2 verse 155 of the Quran. Do you know what Surah 2 verse 155 says? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقْصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ we will test all of you with a shortage of people, of wealth, of hunger, of fear, and of suffering. And give glad tidings to whom? Glad tidings to the patient ones. He gave an overview of what the signs are. When this verse was spoken of, Imam al sadiq said to him, You want to see the signs of the 12th Imam? Look at this verse. What does this verse say? The first thing you'll be tested and the first sign of the reappearance of the 12th Imam is what? The first sign is you will go through a period of fear. You'll go through a period where the kings of your time will be oppressive towards the people. In which way? When the kings of the time allow their own people's rights to be confiscated. When the kings of the time and the rulers of the time are not just with their people when they are arrogant towards a certain group of people not providing them with their rights you find that the first of the signs is what Allah will test us before the 12th Imam rises with a period of fear from our rulers number two well jewelry yes there's a period of intense starvation that there is in the world today, certain streets in India, children don't know when their next meal is, yes? There are people in Africa who don't even break their fast with the luxuries that we break our fast with in the holy month of Ramadan. There'll be a period where you'll find that your trade recessions take place and inadequate income comes together. 2008 was one of the biggest signs that the 12th Imam's reappearance may not be far away. Imam Sadiq, they asked him, what's the signs of the reappearance of the 12th Imam? When the Quran says there will be a shortening in your wealth. He said, one of the signs is convergent markets. They said, what's convergent markets? He said, when you're having trade recession take place, where it's difficult to acquire agriculture, fruits and plants, 
Then he said, you'll reach a stage where you trade and you transact, but you find that there's no profits being made and someone else has taken all that profits. You know, 2008, how close we were to putting a card in a machine and getting no money back. Many people think that now we are in a false sense of security. 2008, we were this close from having no money come out of the banks. Now what's happening to the world again? Everyone's falling into the false sense of the middle class security, yes? That person who's going to go into that false world, they're going to think to themselves, you know what, I can buy a new car. Why do I need the 12th Imam? I can buy a new car. I can go on holidays more frequently. I can change houses as I want. What they don't realize is that, you know what, that system which has got greed, interest at the bottom, people working on their systems behind the scene, at any second there'll be a crash. And there's only one country that will print and survive, watching everyone else fall. What Imam al sadiq said was, don't go into a false sense of security. Because one of the signs of the 12th Imam's reappearance <coughs> is what? Is that recessions become normal. Starvation increase. Poverty increase. Many of us look at this global macro economy and we think to ourselves, it's never going to crash. Yes, let's keep on living and enjoying. What we don't realize, you know what, at any second this crash is going to happen. And if you want to know one of the clearest signs of the 12th Imam is what? The Muslim and the non-Muslim will reach a stage where they say, where is there a man who will come and who will remove interest and greed and impunity from our systems, yes? Because the very basis of corruption in the economic world is that greed and impunity that exists amongst the people. Economically, the world will be at a stage where people are sick and tired of starvation, poverty and recession. Do you know what Imam Salih said? When the 12th Imam returns, what are you going to see? He's going to give out so much wealth, they don't need to check the balance because of how much rizq Allah gives with him, yes? Number four, naqsun min al wat min al anfus. There'll be deaths everywhere. Correct. Everywhere you look on the television, you see death after death after death taking place. Whether it's in Iraq or in Syria or in Pakistan or in Bahrain or in other parts of the world. That's one of the signs of the reappearance is the whole of humanity is tired of seeing deaths, tired of seeing killings. So what does humanity do at the end politically? They all decide, you know what, let's talk and work together to look for a system in which we can eradicate volm. Yes? Don't look at it as America versus Iran. Look at it as human beings who want a better world. Yes? A world which is devoid of injustice, devoid of oppression. Because what's the hadith about the 12th Imam? The 12th Imam's hadith, what do they say? The 12th Imam will come back, eradicate injustice and bring justice. Correct? The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُرِيدُونَ لِيُطْفِئُوا نُورَ اللَّهِ بِأَفْوَاهِهِمْ They, there are a group of people who wish to extinguish the light of Allah using their mouths. وَاللَّهُ مُتِمُّ نُورِهِ Allah will definitely, categorically, verily, ensure that His light will prevail. وَلَوْ كَرِهَ الْكَافِرُونَ Even if the disbelievers dislike, Allah is himself the originator of this light. But what is this light? This is a question that has indeed amazed philosophers and mystics for centuries. And it's beyond a few moments. Suffice for us to say that the Quran states that when it comes to light, it is singular. When it comes to dhulumat, it's plural. Allahu waliyul ladheena amanu yukhrijuhum minal dhulumati. 
Allah is the guardian of those who, who are believers. He takes them from darkness, Dhulumat is plural, but Noor is singular, which means what? Which means there are no different places to seek the Noor. The Noor is one. There is one way to be illuminated by it. What is that way? This Noor is the Noor of Iman. It's the Noor of certainty. It's the Noor of monotheism. It's the Noor of Tawheed. Question. The Quran says there are people who wish to extinguish the light of God. Those who are adamant to ensure that this light is extinguished. In which way? Of course, we know that Rasulullah and Nabi Al-A'zam Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam is one of the ways in which this great light, this illuminating light of God is spread. How? Ya ayyuhal Rasul. The Quran says the Prophet is a way in which this Noor is indeed channeled. In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's illuminating light comes through the Prophet. What else we find in this ayah? We find that after Allah speaks about the futile attempts of people to extinguish the light of God, He says, It is Allah who sent His Messenger to ensure that the entire creation of God are cognizant of this Noor. Tell me, has this been materialized? Have we seen this spreading of the nur of Allah that the Quran has promised? Rasulullah came and he delivered the message brilliantly and immaculately. The theoretical message was delivered, the practical was delivered. But the state that we see today, people have not been able or not all of them are individuals who are under this particular guidance and nur. Therefore, in which capacity and in which way is this Noor materialized fully? It can only be manifested and it is epitomized through Mahdi Hadhi Al Ummah wa Qa'imu Ali Muhammad Salawatullahi wa Salamu Alayhi. That's why you find in our riwayat, in the dua, what do we say? As-salamu alayka ya nur Allah al-ladhi yahtadi bihi al-muhtadun. Imam al-Zaman is the light of God that people seek guidance through him. Imam Ajjan Allah Ta'ala Farajah al-Sharif is this way in which we, you and I, can be inspired by this unbelievable light of guidance. How many times do we hear about this verse being specific to the awaited Savior? They, they desire to put out the light of Allah with their mouths. But Allah will perfect His light. Depending on the verse that we see. That either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that it, it doesn't really matter what these people are trying to do. Allah will perfect the outcome, the destiny. His light will come to this earth and spread itself, being the awaited Savior. This verse is the most outstanding verse of the Holy Quran in regards to the global concept of the establishment of the awaited Savior, Imam Ali Salatu Wasalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّمَا مَثَلُ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا أَنزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ The similitude, the likeness of this world's life is just like water, which we send down from the cloud. And then the herbage grows on the earth, and the cattle will eat from it. From those rains, herbage grows, which by uh, animals and mankind eat. The world continues to move, just like the seasons continue to move and the rains continue to fall. This is life. It continues on in these cycles of rain coming and making food for you and I. And we live out these cycles on a day-to-day -day basis. We will have ages and eras and lifetimes. And the 
well will continue and dynasties will come and go just like seasons come and go and people will eat and people will continue until the world will shift and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says hatta until and this is the important part of the verse hatta idha akharatil til ard zukhrufuha until when the earth puts on its golden raiment its beauty its adornments wazayyannat wa dhanna ahluha annahum qadiruna alayha now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about a period what does that sound like to you and i when we think about such a verse the world will continue but a time will come when the earth puts on its embellishments if you look around the world today and you see how especially in the last 50 or 100 years how the world has begun to put on its embellishments and its adornments <laughs> the earth at night from the satellites above and you see the whole cities lit up and whether you're looking at the states or you're looking at Europe or Asia the whole world is beautified it's adorned with all of its light Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about these sorts of issues at the end of time the earth will have become adorned beautified with its creation with how mankind have created lofty structures how the earth will be adorned and, and lit up at night then it continues and its people were then the ahluha and the qadiruna alayha and its people will think that they have power over it now if you lived 1400 years ago you couldn't think even if you were abu sufyan even if you were yazid you didn't think that you had power over the whole earth day that people think that they have power over the movements of this earth People think that they have power by manipulating the world today. That they can manipulate the world and make it putty in their hands and change it for the worst without any of us noticing it. Look at the way the Quran describes this. Now as a requisite to having power over the world and people thinking people thinking that they have power over the world you need to have a global village, don't you? And thus, it couldn't have happened 500 years ago. It may not even have been able to happen 200 years ago. Only in an era now where we have a global village, where news and information can circumambulate the world within seconds, can people take advantage of that apparatus to be able to destroy the world. The world putting on its embellishments, the world becoming beautified, the world shining in its electric grids. Once the world sees that people have power, or they think that they have power over the world, two signs of the end of times. What does the Quran say happens at that point? <laughs> Our command comes by night or by day. Who is that command? Or what is the fulfillment and the manifestation of that command? Imam al-Mahdi Allah ta'ala faraj al Sahib al-Amr, may Allah hasten his appearance. He comes by day or by night. Now this is very interesting. So now we have two things. The first thing is that Allah Ta'ala is speaking about a global matter. It's not regionalized to the Middle East. It's not regionalized to Europe. The whole earth, people shall think that they have power and they're using it like puppets. At that point, when the earth is in this circumstance, our command comes to it. Now this command, as we stated, is referring to the Imam Ali Salam. Why do you think Allah Ta'ala says it's coming by day or by night? Do you not see that when the command comes, in certain places it will be day, in certain places it will be night. The Imam السلام, will come to Mecca. If he comes on Friday at 12 o'clock in Mecca, knowing the 
global time zones. It will be 9 p.m. elsewhere in the earth. Allah says our command comes by night. It will be late Thursday night, early Friday morning in certain places in the far west. And for them it will still be the early morning, it will be the rising of the day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when mankind has come to the point of such disobedience, such arrogance that they think that they control the earth, affecting globally, be you in Canada or be you in New Zealand, that is when our command will come. بَقِيَّةُ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ What Allah has in store for you is better for you if you are mu'mineen. Oh no! It's how, look how clear! بَقِيَّةُ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ Yes? What Allah has in store, He is reserved is better for you if you are mu'min. Someone came to 60 Imam, he said, can we call Imam Al-Hujjah Amir Al-Mu'mineen? When he comes, can we say, Ya Amir Al-Mu'mineen? He said, no, only Ali ibn Abi Talib is Amir Al-Mu'mineen. No one else, no one else, yes? Then they said, so what do we call him? He said, call him Baqiyatullah, Allahu Akbar. Assalamu alayka ya Baqiyatullah fi afdeh. Salams on you who Allah has in store for us, yes? When someone tells you, I have a surprise in store for you, how much do you wait for the surprise? What if Allah has a surprise for man, yes? And that's why when the 12th Imam comes, you know what Imam Sadiq says? He will stand by the Kaaba and say, Ana Allah. yes? I am the one Allah has in store for all of you. اللهم كل بلية الهجة ابن الحسن صلواتك على Tabii